Welcome to the show. This is the Mind Pump Show, the best show for fitness, health, and entertainment you'll find anywhere in the world, especially here on YouTube. Your mom loves the show. That's how awesome we are. All right, check this out. We're going to give away some free stuff because that's what we do all the time because we're giving awesome people and also because we want to help the YouTube algorithm, to be quite honest. So what we're going to give away today is the Prime Bundle. So you're going to get free Maps Prime Pro and Maps Prime to work on your mobility and muscle connection. Here's how you can win and help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Make it a good comment. Make it a fun comment, engaging comment. If we pick your comment, you'll get those programs absolutely free. You also have to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. One more thing before we start this awesome show. Uh, you need to check out Maps Hit and the No BS Six Pack Formula. They're both 50% off right now, only for the month of July. You can find out more. Just sign up at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just don't forget to use the code July Special with no space for that discount. All right, here we go. I was walking in from the bathroom this morning and saw Andrew kind of- Bro, you have no idea. Kinda, Listen. Kind of aired up a little out, hey, guys. Hey, he's in hiding, dude. He's huh? like undercover. So I'm working out this morning. I come in this morning. It's like 7 or 6.45 and I'm getting all set up. He comes in. We do the head nod. I think he's here to do some work or something. Puts mm -hmm. on his headphones and starts lifting. And uh, Andrew's a beast. Hey, what are you listening to, guy? Uh, rap. Rap? Oh, rap music. You're, yeah. You listen to rap while you work out? Yeah. yeah. What? That's Must have been an okay workout. No, no. That's huh? Yeah. Hey, no, he was good, well, dude. It depends. Is it First of all, rap? his form is impeccable. Like, perfect. Made me very self-conscious of my form. Strong. Wow. He's strong, dude. He was doing deads with three plates and... All kinds of stuff, and uh, it's doing good, dude. Getting a little uh, pump over there. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like you you might have been uh, you know going hard, and he might have been trying to keep up with you because uh, I don't know. I went in the bathroom a bit later and was hearing some noises. What? Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. What happened? <laughs> a little bit of retching going on. I don't no. know what happened, Andrew. Did you throw were, up? Were you trying to keep up with Sal? What happened there? Uh, I was pushing it a little on the sled drives. Ah. Wait, you actually uh, threw up? Yeah. No way, dude. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I take it back. Oh, man. I take it all back, dude. That's hilarious. Brutal. Did you go too did you go too hard or what? Like what happened? No, I, I was just pushing the sled drive so fine. I just wanted to go all max for my sets. Okay. And it was too much. Do you not work out hard like that normally? <laughs> 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 like telling you Sal has an effect I just don't push it that hard on the sled drives and okay. I guess having you there Sal made me uh, made me push the extra level you lied uh, dude it got, it got that's me. not you're full of shit is it something no, about the wife beater to get you all motivated bro. or what no it was huh? just the, it was just the environment it's I just, I just the felt veins. like going after yeah, it I get, and, I get uh, kind of crazy when I it got me I wasn't even doing a hard workout that's stupid I was going this like, guy low downplays everything I just yeah. had to do my best I only had 700 pounds on the bar a big deal. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. You know, sometimes uh, that'll I'll start to feel nauseous if I work out hard and I had too much caffeine. That'll that'll definitely do that to me sometimes, where I feel kind of like oh, a little bit too much. So be careful with that. But nonetheless, we did a workout. <laughs> you, did a, <laughs> you did a good. I like seeing that. You know what I mean? I like seeing when our team comes in and works out. I encourage everybody to work out in here. It's nice to see everybody, you know, doing that. Yeah, I feel this year has been the, the most consistent with the staff. Like if I were look yeah. around and see everybody training and stuff like that, I think that this is the most consistent I've seen the gym being used. Yeah, for yeah sure. dude, have you seen, so Choki's a beast. I've seen her work out. She's strong. Yeah. We have the intern, Olivia. Yeah. She's strong as hell. She was telling me kind of what she, by the way, just want to let you guys know. The intern said I was her favorite host. Yeah, so I dude, let you guys know that. I I'm was, gonna have to check her on that. I, like, yeah, I like I'm gonna ask her like individually. I think me and Adam should do this and just ask her. Okay, like who's Make her your feel bad? Yeah, well, like <laughs> if I ask you her specifically, who's your favorite host? Like, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see if she says me or she says Adam. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, you know what? Speaking of morning workouts and all that stuff, so interesting study came out, right? So there was a study that came out that actually been several studies, but this one kind of put them all together where they were looking at protein timing throughout the day to see if its effect on muscle function and growth. And like what time of the day that you consume yeah. to your total amount or just one? Right. Time? So let's say your total amount for the day is 100 grams, okay. right? It, what if you eat 50 in the morning and then the rest later on? Or what if it's a little bit in the morning and then more later on? Okay. So basically, essentially, same amount of protein, 
but more in the morning versus more at night or vice versa. What's and the difference? Do the studies talk about what point you work out and does that matter at all? In no, this? it didn't talk about workouts. In fact, there was one study they did on, on older women. They were 65, generally 65 years. That was the average age. And they controlled for protein. But some of the women ate more of their protein in the morning and some of the women ate more at night. The women who ate more of the protein in the morning had better muscle function and muscle health. Now, this uh, corroborates with other studies that have shown on rats, where if they, in rat studies are kind of cool, part of it's not cool, right? Because sometimes they don't translate. But the other part that's cool is that they can control everything because the rat does, you just, you're the one that feeds it, you know, feeds it. Right, right. You're the, so, and what they show is that the rats who eat the protein early in the morning have more muscle than the rats that eat more protein in the evening. What? So morning feedings of, now this is a small effect, but it's still, it's there. So it is kind of interesting. Right? Now I feel like all that gets thrown out the window depending on what time you work out because I would think that would have the the biggest difference on on how the protein is utilized, right? So if somebody who trains early in the morning and then eats protein versus somebody who trains in the afternoon or evening and then eats their protein after, wouldn't the, wouldn't it be more logical that that would be that would have a a bigger indicator you on know, the, the, the benefits of it. The studies that I've seen on that really just show that having some protein post workout, but other than that, it, otherwise it doesn't make a big difference. I feel like you should share this with Magic Spoon. I think that'd be like a great commercial pitch for them. Actually, it's a great point, right? Protein Ma in the morning. Yeah, because yeah, right it's away. cereal. You typically eat cereal in the morning and it's super high protein cereal, no sugar. Do you so. see they, they've made their way now in the bodybuilding space? Remember when we first partnered up with them? And oh, we talked, have they? Yeah, yeah. I've seen, I've now actually, I see a ton of like, you know, influencers that are in the the bodybuilding. Oh, yeah. and it, was, it was just a matter of time. We yeah, saw yeah, yeah. No, I I, I thought that was the area they should have went first. I think they really try to go more health and wellness. Like I mean, we got introduced through Max Max Lugavira. Yeah, who's the health guy from about Magic Spoon? When I thought, man, this is a bodybuilding type of uh, product more than anything else. So yeah. they're they're making a hard push that direction. Yeah, but I do think it's interesting, right? To eat more of that in the morning. Now, here's some other stuff: is that when you look at studies on like hormone responses, people with anxiety. Um, for example, uh, they also recommend high protein breakfast, low carb breakfast. So higher protein in the morning, later on in the day, then you can eat lower protein, and you tend to feel better mm. throughout the day. Do you guys feel that way with your? Have you guys messed? Well, yeah, with that? we've talked about this about when we were kids. You know, the mm -hmm. idea of you know pancakes and syrup oh before God. you head off to go take a test, and then you're I nodding did carb off. loading all wrong. Yeah, like, I was like, I'm just gonna eat all the carbs, and then that's gonna fuel my activities uh, the rest of the day. Yeah, dude, I did that. Except I just bonk. I, I did mean, that I mean, too. I feel I don't know. There's so I'm torn, right? Like I think generally speaking, I feel better low carb, higher protein in early in the morning. But if I know I'm going to be training around noon or one, I actually like to have at least one, if not two meals that have a good amount of 30, 50 grams of carbs sure. heading into. So I'd like to have 100 mm -hmm. grams to 150 grams of carbs in my system before I hit my afternoon workout. And I feel like I perform better as far as overall health, you know, clarity, yeah. being, that type of stuff. I, I feel better on. The I'm so much carb. sharper if I'm just sticking with protein in the morning and coffee specifically versus like carbs. And that's just personally like i just feel like if i'm more in that uh you know ketosis sort of state then you know i'm a lot sharper yeah we well, guys know i work out early so i'd work out fasted but then afterwards i'll typically eat some protein you know i try to piece this together with like evolution why would this why would we build more muscle with protein in the morning why would we because other studies show eating calories earlier in the day tends to be better than eating calories later in the day in terms of health and I, the best i can come up with is like when we hunted and we would eat a lot of protein, we probably weren't killing animals after the sun went down. I think it's probably we're hiding because we're really you know, bad in the evening. Oh, we're, that's your theory? that You get, you really think we were out hunting at 4 o'clock in the morning? Not 4 o'clock, but in the morning when the sun is up. Like, we're, uh, he, like we're terrible in the evening. Oh. We're blind, and predators see us very easily at night. I bet you— Yeah, I don't think we're hunting at 10 p.m. at night back then. No, sure, I think it would but... be like sun up, that's when we're hunting— and then we catch the animal eventually. Sun is still up. We bring it back and then we eat it. And mm. then the sun goes down. It's like, get in the cave and let's hide because now the tigers and whatever are out. That's yeah. what I would think, right? I can get behind that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I, can I, I can't. Always bringing it back to evolution. <laughs> no, yeah. I was Absolutely. just sharing your evolutionary theory on the whole why why men can't find shit in the refrigerator. Oh, yeah. I think that one's fascinating. I made that one up. <laughs> I know you made sense, it up, but right? I actually think it. So, because I don't know a single man that cannot relate to this, right? So, I just had Jerry. You were I was terrible at finding shit. <clears throat> I, we, uh, I just ran out of the. Um, 
the serum, right? My face serum. And I, and I was like, damn it, I know we had some in the back, right? And I went back yesterday and I looked on the shelves, but I did the typical like man look, you know, like I just looked at it and go like, oh, it's not there, you know? And she goes, oh, it's it's there. It's on the second shelf. I said, like, no, I looked right there. And she comes over, I'm with her and she <laughs> like moves a like one her finger. Yeah, and just points she moves right like at one you're box over. Oh my She's like, God, there's three of them there right the there. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, yeah. how many times have you done that with your wife? I could think in the, in the refrigerator, honey, we're out of mustard. Oh. No, it's in there. No, we're out of the mustard. I've been looking for 10 yeah. minutes. And then she walks down and like moves one product, and then there Dude, it is. They get so pissed off. Yeah, yeah. but no, Sal's theory, so. I, you've heard him tell what how. Yeah, he, we're hunters. You're looking at the horizon. You don't want to disturb anything, so yeah. you're just looking, and there's no movement. So you're like, there's nothing. And yeah. then the gatherers, right? Yeah, women are really. Yeah, they're moving shit. They're like, we got to find the the roots right. and the berries. Right, so we we do detect movement. I, I feel like more effectively. It, we're supposed to. I mean, I <laughs> yeah. So if you, if you opened people, your fridge and a fucking rabbit ran across, you would definitely see it as a man. But <laughs> other saying, than that. You're not finding anything that's inside yeah. there. Okay. We gotta be better at something. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like our skills are, are gone because we don't have to hunt shit anymore. Mm, you yeah. know? So it's mm. like we can't really show any of our skills. Yeah. So instead we're like, where's the mustard? I can't find <laughs> I can't find the damn mustard. Oh, yeah. That's so funny. So uh more cool of evolutionary studies. So they did this this test where they got women based off of uh, pictures of faces to predict whether or not the men in the pictures were more likely to engage in casual sex versus less likely to engage in casual sex. And then they did the same thing with men. Could they predict by a woman's face if she was more likely or less likely? What a good app. Wow. How good would that app be? That would be a fun one. Yeah, how yeah. yeah. good Imagine. I bet I could predict that. Yeah. 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 Get There's the fuck a out certain look, dude. Your guy. <laughs> what? Dude, you what? know what's the look? Dude, there's yeah, certain, like yeah. eyes. Show, like, yeah, what, get, show me the. They you, have those eyes. And there's mm, that's the casual sex eyes. Yeah. 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 You're strong. Eyes. You're strong. Well, I, I hate to shut. That's what I'm. Yeah, that's what I mean. All right, well, I saw those eyes. That's why I'm like. Hey, that's what she. This is she looked like right before she said. No, that to I me. think guys always think that women are cows. <laughs> I think we're just naturally. That's our. That's our know. problem. Yeah. Yeah, I think she likes standoffish eyes. I know she says she doesn't, but I think she likes me. She totally wants to bang. How do you know? Because she told me to move out of the way and I could just tell yeah. by the way she, there's like a receptiveness so the men could not predict with any accuracy okay but the women could predict with something like 80 percent accuracy well that's because 80 percent of the guys would no, 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 no. <laughs> that's what, what's the old is it chris rock who does the thing like a guy if a guy is uh, doing any gesture or anything like that he's also offering dick so if he opens the door for you it's like hey here's the door and do you like my dick and also or, or is this yeah, would you like my dick like no. that's in this have you ever yeah. seen that that's a yeah. that's a stand-up clip i think it's chris rock who does that one i have to look andrew had to look that Probably. up who's a who's a comedian who goes on that yeah. rant every time a man that's all it is. That's all it is. Oh, 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 could I get that for you? How about some dick? No, no, no. So, so it was more or less likely. And the women were able to predict by facial features. And then the facial features included things like big eyes, big nose, long face, like facial features that are associated with uh, higher forehead, I think was the other one associated with higher levels of testosterone. So testosterone is what influences that behavior. More testosterone, especially in utero, is correlated to more likelihood to engage in things like casual sex. So because of the, the face of the man and it displays the testosterone, it subconsciously they're like, they could predict. But I think you're, what you said was hilarious. Huh. If there's an app- I know. You like seriously, it. you imagine that? Like, like oh, I'm not going to approach her. Yeah, forget Ooh. that. Put a picture of your oh. man in this app. It'll tell <laughs> you the queen. percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that yeah. would be. You know what I think? I, I think I could probably predict. You know, based on just the face alone, whether or not like you'd be susceptible to join a cult. <laughs> what? I okay. Why? Yeah, I, there's something about the occult leaders do have like a cult face. Yeah, well, the cult, just, the, the, just, the, the, but also the followers. Like they just have this like. <laughs> it's like a real like 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 deer in the headlights kind of like hey and this is just like softness and like you know rosy cheeks yeah, and pretty it, accurate just it's like a, it's just <laughs> the same people that are in mlms yeah exactly <laughs> what's the correlation i just I, I feel like i'd be pretty accurate with that yeah they do all look kind of the same yeah i think you're i think you're right on that hey i have a question for you guys have you guys been following uh i know we sold last year we sold off our peloton stock have you guys been following uh peloton since actually then? i'll look at them right now remember they had the they had the major like uh the the, the it was a one or two deaths that happened right so that, that happened from <laughs> falling off the treadmill or whatever and then the stock took a dive i mean they were i think they were oh, at one 
180 or something like that. No, no. Back, so back, the their peak back in December was 160, but right now they're. Oh, I thought it hit 180. I don't see it. Not uh, the last year, uh, at least. <laughs> um, but the but the today they're at 123, so they're kind of hovering around that. You know what stock? Did you I, hear the news though that they they just came out with? What? So they're going to move into the video game market. What? Well, how? Yes. Like what? Like you got to ride the game to keep the game, uh, ride the bike to keep the Maybe. game. Maybe. So you've have you guys have ridden those before? Those those. Uh, I know the Bay Club has one where you mm. have there's three bikes and my sister in law has one and we're virtually racing. Mm -hmm. Have you seen those? No, I, I, it's actually a lot of, they're actually, as for non cardio guys, I have a lot of fun when I do those. I think it's a blast. You get a buddy or yours, and then you guys race through courses and you're doing it virtually, but you're actually doing it manually in, in person. So, you know mm. what the problem with that is? Every time they do that with video games to try and make it more fun, people, they use it at first and they stop using it because it's hard. Well, that's not necessarily true. Mm. Dance Dance Revolution is an example of that. I mean, that's like one of the most like crazy popular games. That's have you seen how people play Dance Dance Revolution? Yeah, do you remember, remember I went down. <laughs> you know and what met they do, bro? They lean on the bar yeah, and then dude. they do this with their feet, <laughs> dude. They do it in the easiest way possible. It's still impressive yeah. as shit. You, uh, the guy, the guy who I met. Remember when I met the guy uh, Organifi? Organifi Same who, with guitar here. He lost over a hundred pounds doing it, and he's like a, one of the Dance Revolution champions. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll get Drew to send a clip over of him because I I had a clip in like I think my old phone when I went down there and I watched him. But he's like he did it in front of me. It was just and you're right, he cheats, but he's still sweating his ass off. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's not like it's not exercise. It's well, definitely I don't know. Like I I think there's something there that uh, for people that aren't like prone to go into a gym. I, I just think there's such a big population of people that would never do physical activity. And I think that yeah. might be an introduction to something where like, oh, well, at least I'm in a video game. I'm trying to like compete. Well, how about this? I mean, how about the fact that after, you know, mom rides it at 5 a.m. for a half hour, hour, it sits there all day long. But now, you know, little Timmy can come in and play video games on it. Mm. I mean, now it, it's yeah, multi purpose. But, but if he wants to play video games, is he going to pick the Peloton? Or is he gonna <clears> I don't his... know if it's necessarily going to be like, I don't know. All they said is they are moving into the video game market. I think it would be pretty naive of them to only make bike riding games out of it. I mean, you could just use the monitor for a game gaming. So maybe some of the games include the pedals and stuff like that. Maybe others come with a controller that you play. Like well, a, that would be brilliant. Huh. Well, I mean, that, yeah. it wouldn't be that much more difficult to make it connect to Can you take the a, monitor off the bike? I don't know. I know you can swivel it around because Peloton's moved into like weight training also. So you, they have now parts where you can weight train and then you can turn it around with your little weight hmm. set and follow your, your well, coach Well, that's interesting. Trainer. I mean, if it is successful, you might see that really kind of blasting all over the industry. Well, I mean, in the video game market is, video games is massive. I know. Hmm. I'm Did trying you? to cast it up here. It's not casting, but it's called Lane Break. And what it does, it prompts users to change their cadence and resistance to meet various goals and to control an on-screen rolling wheel. Okay, so so, it's, so it's interactive we'll video game it. with that. Okay, so yeah. do you oh, guys, so that's what Pe that's where Peloton that's is starting. That's Peloton. Okay, yeah. okay. So I, I, and you, I wonder if Peloton already does this. Do you guys know if they organize <clears throat> like big marathons or big races where people can sign up virtually and compete? I would imagine. I'm they sure do. they would. I mean, I know that like the way my friends use it because I have quite a few friends that have, have one, four friends that have Peloton. And they all they all like meet up all the time. So it's like you know they meet each other at six a.m. Now that makes sense with when you're meeting up with friends. That makes a lot of sense. Oh I yeah, that's how, that. I think that's how it's Strava most does it like real competitive where they actually well they're out it, you know and they they GPS uh, track like their runs and then somebody else comes in and tries to beat their time and all that. So I'm sure they could use that same kind of formula. Were you guys with Twenty Four Hour Fitness when they did the the triathlon competitions? Yeah, that's. Remember. People I, swam and ran. I, and I shared the story of that was the when I kind of figured out that I was naturally good at swimming, never being coached, never really doing <laughs> that it. That always cracks me up. Yeah, that, I do. You, you could have been so, like, you probably could have been a like, Well, college. bro, at, at that time, when I did this competition, I was, like, meat-headed out. I was calling, 235, dude. no cardio guy, like, just eating everything inside, just puffy face. And I get in a pool, and I beat the Ironman guy and the Navy SEAL dude. <laughs> and everybody was like, "Damn, you're hella fast in the pool." And I'm like, "I didn't yeah. know I was that." I mean, I, in I knew swim I was trunks, not even my, my gauge of how fast I was was beating like my little sister in the pool. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when I was growing up swimming, I didn't go. I never got into 
racing. I never was in an Olympic pool and race. And then the other time was with you guys. Yeah. When I raced those guys at uh, Bay when, One, and I lost. And yeah. then I was like all discouraged because I was talking shit. You about were hella close. Though. They're like D one competitors. Yeah, they both yeah. were D one guys <laughs> at Arizona State that are, were uh, that were swimmers. And I was like, okay, I felt a little bit better about losing to those two guys, right? So I, does that I, make you sad that you're? Yes, because you're me, such an athlete I that tried, you, dude. you I just didn't sink in the you water. didn't do the one sport you could have been great at. I I'm devastated over that. The fact that I have no training whatsoever in that, and then I had the ability to get in there and just hang, tells me that if I were to apply myself like everything else that I've gone after in my life, I would think I would improve. Mm. So, I mean, I can't imagine what I... And, and when you think about... I mean, my body is literally... I have this tiny little waist. I have narrow, thin legs. I've got a wide back. Yeah. I have a really long you wingspan. Long arm span, yeah. yeah, I mean, and you say, duh, but I didn't learn all that stuff until I was... 20 something years old into personal training. Is that because mm. swimming just wasn't the cool sport? So you No, know the- it's not. It's like where I grew up in rural towns. So and you didn't really have pools. Yeah, it was like soccer was the option. Like that yeah. was about the, one of the few sports. In fact, I couldn't even play basketball until I moved to a little bit bigger town where basketball, they had enough kids that could play basketball. So they definitely didn't have a pool mm. at my junior high or elementary school that I grew up in. Wow. Yeah, so I didn't find out till way later. Wow. Yeah. I'm terrible mm. at swimming. Yeah. <laughs> I swim like a rock. Dude, well, that's why I like uh, Hawaii was because I don't know if it's just because it's so salty, the ocean. Like I was like floating. Yeah. And I never float. High body fat. I, yes, I, I was going to say it could be that. What <laughs> the fuck? Or it could be 30% body fat. I mean, <laughs> if that was the case, it happened in pools. So, so it's got to be the salt. You know, yeah, the salt. The salt honey. lifted me up, dude. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that. Hey, he's yeah. like a buoy. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, this is weird. Boy, it's water. Oh, salty, this is man. Nice. Super salty uh, water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fuck off. Hey, um, hey, speaking of salt and water, do, have you guys, uh, do you guys know anybody that's ever been to like the Dead Sea? Is it the Dead Sea? That's the one that's like full of like super, super salty. So I had an aunt that went out. Can't say I do. So it's anybody who's been to the Dead Sea. Okay, so it's super salt. I don't know how much more salt. Is there a reason why there's more salt there than there is somewhere else? I don't know what the reason is, but I know there's so much that there's no like life in it. Like it's so salty that it's it's Dead Sea, right? Right. So I had an aunt. This is a true story. If you go out there and you you'll float on top of the water, and it's just 280 parts per thousand. So yeah, that's that so means nothing. That to me. Eight times saltier than average extreme. seawater. Okay, so wow. eight times more salt than I guess the ocean. Okay. Well, you so, don't want to get in your pee hole. So Ooh. I had oh my god. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> is this from last night? Or is yeah, it? Just, <laughs> you know. Uh, that's the first thought that comes to mind. So my aunt went there with my uncle yeah. and she floated and couldn't get her feet back down. She was stuck. She was literally stuck floating. <laughs> that much? That's how much. Wow. He had to go out there and walk very carefully because if, if his feet went up, he would have got stuck too. And then he kind of pulled her down. I guess that makes sense because the, the only time that I've felt something to, to compare that to was when we do the salt baths. Oh, you're talking about and the Epsom when you, salt? Yeah. We, no, no, no. The um, float, float tanks. tanks. Oh, float tanks. Yeah. yeah. How much salt is in a float, float tank? A lot. Let's a compare. Ton. So that was 280 parts. Let's see what the float tank is. Because you do. You're like on the top. Yeah. And you couldn't sink. You, I mean, you have to like force your legs down or arms down to touch the bottom. That's true. So, I remember that. Well, yeah. Did I tell you guys that when I, over six, se- I didn't tell us how many parts though, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, we need you to convert there. Well, Doug. after you guys derailed my, I was actually going to go into basically why that, uh, like Viore oh, this has a, a rash right here? guard. Yeah, it was like, my attempt to kind of bring it in. <laughs> I let me hear it to the fact that I was a, I didn't know and and, and found that uh, Viore has rash guards, and so I bought one uh, specifically for Hawaii because of my white skin and everything else. Mm. Uh, and it, it was awesome. It was like um, Viore has rash guards. Yeah, they have rash guards for men and women too. And I didn't Courtney know that. Got one too. So yeah. So that oh, was, I mean, that was look, cool. What they look cool? Are they stylish or what? Cool, tight, and pull uh, them up, Doug. Can I see them? I wanted to yeah, see them. Sorry, them we're making you go left, right over here. But yeah. I'm, I'm actually really interested in this. I mean, I, I like to wear rash guards when we wakeboard and stuff like that. Not that I've done that anytime recently, but it's like a compression shirt, right? Yeah, yeah. you like to work out in them and walk water. around in them all the time. Yeah, but that's no, the yeah. thing is, like, I don't want to keep spraying myself with chemicals and everything too and i know like zinc and also I, of course like you know covering myself with like pasty white you know substances so you're helpful the, but you're, like dorky I, i'm not trying to like you know be the zinc kid out there like you know glowing instead you're the dad that's it's got the, the long dad guy shirt, with the shirt the you know like <laughs> I, I waited till like i was like doing excursions like i was on the boat and like doing things instead yeah. of like i'll take my shirt off when i'm like at the beach and like yeah, you know, being a normal say. person but uh no that's like a big trend like uh, there's people
people that just wear shirts now, like going. So I used to wear rash guards all the time. Don't you remember? I was teasing to, him to work out or oh, walk to, around, to work out. Walk or out. like do jujitsu or something. Yes, but, that, that yeah, they're great to that, grapple. That, that works, but they're uh, great to grapple. So I wonder if if viewer would be an option for that. I mean, it's just a short sleeve, though. It's not long sleeve that I got. Yeah, rash guards are great for grappling because they co obviously cover your skin. They allow you to move, so you know t-shirts can be loose and, and stuff like that. I actually had Jer Jerry send uh, Doug a review that was sent over to me. For oh, is that the rash guard right there? It doesn't yeah. even look like a rash guard. I know. It's just a, like a tight shirt, basically. It's like an Under Armour kind of yeah. uh, Is it fitted shirt. as tight as a rash guard? Because rash guards are normally like... Yeah, it's fitted. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, 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 oh, yeah. It's that looks that is stylish. Yeah. Yeah. I so, like that. So, yeah, you got me into, by the way. I know you're making fun of me. You're the one that got me into working out in compression, in compression pants. Yeah, and yeah. I like it. I do, too. And, and I told you guys a study show that it's like it, you're it being improves performance. when you do squats. It know? improves performance, yeah. too. Improves it performance. No, I wear yeah. shorts over it, dude. Huh? Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> I have to throw it out there, though. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. No, I, that's. I'm sorry. I'm not going to wear <laughs> compression pants and no shorts. Yeah, you, no, you don't it, need to see that. No moose knuckle. It, right? it's, it's, uh, Viore sent. I had a, got no. a guy who I was talking about. I think I shared on my story like a uh, the latest outfit of Viore that I was wearing. Um, it's actually these new pants that I'm wearing right now that I really like. Let me see. Uh, these are the ones that we they got sent before we stand went up. up. Show the show the camera. Oh, you want me? Yeah, turn yeah, around. Let me see this real quick. See what we're working. Oh wait, these are nice. Look at that. Watch Wait, out. You don't need to be weird about it. Just sure. do normal standing. Okay. Why you got to be weird? <laughs> you just got to stand. He does bodybuilding pose. Physique. He's I know. Hey, hey, he actually, he almost got he into did, his he physique. Did. He did. No, no, don't do that, one, dude. That's that one pose where it's the side. Where he waves his yeah, hand. No, yeah, no, I, I, I like, like these. I forget the name of these ones. Uh, maybe Doug could look that up also. But <laughs> <laughs> I have like six windows <laughs> open right now. You got a lot now. of stuff to do over here, Doug. Well, we're trying to fix your search history because it's been pretty bad for the last month or two. Thank you. I appreciate it. Stuff that you've been searching for. This is a little better. No, but read the... I got a cool review this. that I was sharing. I was sharing those pants, and then uh, a guy messaged me and was talking about how how great Viore is, and he's been buying their stuff for a while, and they're very much so like the the, the Nordstroms of <clears throat> direct consumer athleisure wear. I, I love that the customer service yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah, this guy's name is Lance. He said, "I just wanted to let you know about the customer service experience I had from Viore recently." I had the seam of a pair of core shorts that was about a year old start to become unraveled. It was right at the pocket seam. I emailed their customer service about it. They responded the next day, asked for some pics. He sent the pics in. Uh, they responded that they would send a new pair. And about a week later, he had a new pair. A year old shorts. That's right. And they sent him new Isn't that ones. that rad? Legit. Yeah, that's insane. You only get away with that if your quality is excellent. Is though. that good? Yeah. Yeah, if you have, because you know that rarely happens. happens. You can't do that if you're Target. You know what I mean? They would lose <laughs> so much money. Yeah, yeah. I would like that. to see you try. On yeah, that kind of stuff. So you don't know the names of those. I like those. Uh, they look like the joggers, but they're I wanna different say, I want to say Pronto joggers, maybe. Mm. I'm not sure. Let me look here. Yeah, go down a little bit further. I know they're down a little ways. But they're they so they when they gave it to us so they're they our deal now I don't know if you guys know this so our when we get the outfits from it's like uh, every quarter because I think that's when they change the the new stuff comes in so when they sent this over to us before we went and did the opening mm -hmm. no it's not ripstop I think it's pronto the pronto joggers keep going down keep going uh, I really like them though so the Sunday joggers have been like my go to for, yeah. since we started it's my I know I know Justin likes ripstop I yep. like the Sunday joggers I've been Are they I the got, meta joggers. Yes, Meta. Thank you. Mm. Sorry, not Pronto. It was the Meta Joggers. Where'd you get Pronto from? It's because Ponto, by the way. Ponto. Huh? Yeah. They have Ponto. Oh, Ponto, not Pronto. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. I like your name, though. Yeah. 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 Come on. You know me. More, more names. <laughs> just, He's so uh, ethnic. You know, I, right? The yeah. fact that I was that close, I think it's pretty good. Everything's, <laughs> everything's ethnic. Yeah. The, 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 the meta, pa meta Pants are the pants that I'm wearing right now that I really like. So they're, I, they've now become my favorite of the Sunday joggers. They're like just a, they're like a lighter, they have kind of a stretch material to them, real lightweight, breathable. I saw them in, in uh, Kauai. Where, when I was, we, there was like a little shopping center that I went to to find, because my son needed a pair, another pair of bathing suit. Mm -hmm. So I went to the shopping center, and these are like small Kauai shops, and I saw Viore at several of them. Oh, yeah. That, they're, they're exploding. Yeah, yeah. That's that's such a success story yeah, yeah. Um, of a business, especially during uh, COVID. They did very very well. So it's mm -hmm. just a testament to their their quality and in, in, in customer service. So I have something that I want to ask you about uh, since this Me? is yeah it's okay. more, well it's, it's more your your wheelhouse I think of of topic. Um, but I saw just I read an article this morning that California is now going to be the first state to implement the universal income. Mm. 
Uh, I think it's five hundred to a thousand dollars. I want to say per family, and I, I don't know. Now the, this is based on income, though, right? They're not giving course, it to everybody. Of course, yeah. No, if okay. you're under a certain, if you make under a certain amount per household, you will now start receiving. A, and I and I also think if it matters if you have kids or not. So I don't know the exact specs of like, but it's universal basic basic income, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what the UBI yeah. is? Mm -hmm. That what it's called, right? Yeah, UBI yeah, yeah. is the and it's uh, Andrew Yang Andrew is one of the guys is, who's yeah, been who's been championing it for a while. Now I know that was, he was trying to run on his presidential campaign and was trying to run on this, right? Mm -hmm. um, what is your thoughts on this idea? They re okay, by the way, too, they've done they did a test run of this in Oakland for the last two years, mm -hmm. and in Oakland, uh, I want to say they did. And Doug can maybe fact check me. I think they did like three hundred and some people. You had to obviously qualify for this, and supposedly. Uh, they had a lot of success. Now, their, their measures- How do they measure it? Okay, so the, the way they measured it was like people, uh, how much money they saved or where they spent the money. And so what they got back, because the theory was like, oh, well, these people just go blow, blow it on alcohol or just spend it on get, on, on worthless things, yeah. right? Um, but the people that you know responded, that received it, the things that they did with it were, oh, I was able to get my son, you know, his cleats for his football, yeah. and, and and so the, the the response that they got from this was very very positive. Now, uh, <clears throat> is that a true measure of? Because the the people that are skeptical of it are saying that that's not enough to prove that it was successful. No, that's so the challenge with small samples like that is that you can uh, you can monitor them and they know they're a part of a test and you're watching them. You know, 300 people, right? Yeah. When you start to really expand it, um, then it then you start to run into problems. Here's the the issue with uh, UBI. The issue is if it's in replace of the bureaucracy that we have that's used to administer our current Mm -hmm. You know, welfare. It's not though. It's an additional to right. So it's just more. It's just more, more throwing more money at a problem that money's not fixing. What they should do is eliminate yeah, the replace bureau, it. You're right. Because for every dollar, here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize: for every dollar that we pay in taxes that goes to helping people with housing or you know money for food or education or whatever, for every dollar we put in, the person only receives something like you know half of it or less because a huge percentage of it goes to the administrative costs the and the bureaucracy. There are so many state, local, and federal employees and bureaucracy that is tied up with all that garbage. <clears throat> so it would make sense to cut that, which now saves a ton of money. Yeah, but do you And then think give people the money straight up yeah, as a directly, check. Yeah. Because, yeah, some people will probably spend it poorly, but some may spend it Now, well. do you know if... Because I, I didn't follow the, the presidential race that much, and I don't know. I've only listened to Andrew Yang talk a few times about this. I haven't heard in great detail. Now, is the idea that they roll it out, they prove that it's valuable and it works well and then start to take away from welfare or do you think the 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 no. ultimate goal is to to keep them both running do you, you think that's what uh, it no. is think of it politically okay you have first off you have a governor who's getting ready to get recalled yes right this is the last like fear tactic yeah so he's giving shit away like left and right <laughs> and, and uh, can you give people free stuff and then take it away later uh, good luck doing that and staying in office i don't think so now right. and then, because then the argument becomes these people are dependent on it. How are you going to take this away? It's just more... California ble is bleeding uh, residents for the first time in history. We've got a lot of problems happening in the state with homelessness, with uh, costs of housing, with just lots of issues, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, you want to attract more people. You give them, start giving free money. You want to keep yourself from getting recalled, recalled to give them... So money. I want to go back to the fact that they said that Oakland um, was successful. So that they said that it was. What What do you think? Um, what do you think is going to go wrong with it then? Or what do you think is going to be the repercussions of it? Now it's thirty five million dollars uh, that these people are going to be able to pull from, right? So that California was approved for thirty five million dollars, and it's a monthly basically stipend right. that these people get. My thought, the first comes to mind to me, is that all it will really do is just raise everything up a little bit. Like, you know, the, now milk will be 10 cents more expensive. Now this I think it will have will a nominal effect on, on inflation because it's not, uh, it's, it's not uh, just printed money. Mm. Um, so it's money that was existed the in the first place. The printed already did that. Yeah, I, that's what will cause the big inflation. I'm not worried about the inflationary effect of it. I, don't, I think that will be minimal. All it's going to do is you're just, you're just now increasing the burden of government. You're spending more, we're going to require more taxes. 
as a result, and you haven't cut any costs. And, and what do you, how are you going to possibly reverse that in the future? How do you prove, you know, it's funny. We did this whole like um, war on poverty. I don't know how many decades ago. Poverty was going down tremendously before that. After we started that war on poverty, it's flattened out. Are you talking about the New Deal? Uh, no, not the New Deal, uh, but stuff afterwards. And what did it end up causing? It did cause generational effects where people were kind of dependent on that. And the bureaucracy never goes away. You know what the problem, <clears throat> one of the big problems with these big government bureaucracies is? If they don't spend the money that they're allocated, so let's say that you create this bureaucracy to administer childcare. So like, oh, we need people need childcare. We're going to take taxes and we're going to give people childcare. And now we've got all these people working in the state that are going to administer it and control who gets it and whatever. Here's what happens if they get, let's say they get $20 million. Here's your $20 million to administer and to, you know, to work with childcare. And then they come back at the end of the year, they say, we only needed $10 million. They're going to cut their, they're going to cut their budget. <clears throat> but if they come out and spend, we spent every dollar of 20 million, we need more, they get more. Yeah. So it, it's 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 in the best interest of the bureaucracy that runs it to spend every yeah. damn cent right. and to always need more money and never save money. <clears throat> and so that's just what happens. It just blows the hell well, up. Well, the, 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 my buddy and I got into it about this because he's 100% for it, and I, I'm not against it. I'm skeptical about it. And what I was skeptical about it was I think we can all agree that there's definitely a percentage, whether that's 1%, 50%, or 90% of the people, that it will motivate them to do nothing. It, there's sure. there's definitely there is definitely the mom who's working two jobs, has three kids, busting her ass, barely getting by, and this is going to be just enough to make yeah. sure her son gets cleats for football and is going to be maybe save save her and, right. and mm -hmm. rightfully so. And you love to hear that and see that happen, but there's also going to be somebody who's like living at home with mom still, you know, and eh, maybe I'll work, maybe I won't work. I, she takes care of me anyways. I can collect this because I'm 30 something years old and still live at home and I'm going to collect this money and is not going to go out and get a job. The, my question is, is it going to be a greater percentage of people that are going to be helped from it? Or will it be a greater percentage of people that will I, manipulate I think it? no matter what, when you're giving free, you know, money or free services to people, you're going to have both elements of that, no matter what. Right. The challenge is, a, do we do it? Uh, I think at some point there's a level that we should probably do something. But b, how do we make it as efficient as possible? How do we make sure that that every dollar we put into it goes to that person and not to this bullshit? Right. Cut out all the min administrators. Hundred yeah. percent. That's the issue. That's, so that's I, I, the truth is, now here's not, the truth is that's not possible though. Uh, yeah. Well, it's possible to cut a lot of it. I mean, if you yeah. send the checks directly. Yeah, and that's now here's the thing. You talk to people who are super supportive of all these government welfare programs, and you tell them, fine, let's cut those programs and just give them a check. They're against it. No, I don't want to do that. No, Why? Why are you, <laughs> their jobs wrapped in? They are tied to the bureaucracy. Yeah. And then they'll come up and say, well, these people don't know how to spend their money. We'll spend it better for them. It's all about control. Mm -hmm. I think give them the check, but cut the cost. If anything, we'll spend less taxes. They'll get more money, have more freedom with that money. You'll get more free market effects from it. Yeah, but then how do you spend. decide who gets it, though? And how do you then how do you still manage? Negative income tax. Yeah. I think so, you, like Milton Friedman put together a, a negative income tax uh, plan that I think was as good as you're probably going to get. Nothing's going to be perfect. So essentially, the the it's a, it's a scale of how much you get depending on your income. And then that's your money. And then you can spend it. On, it's like uh, school choice. It's, it's, it's just like this. Instead of <clears throat> telling the parent, you have to send your kid to this shitty school that you live in their district, you say to them, here's your, your voucher for public school. You can pick any public school and take your kid wherever you want. Like that would create great pressure on underperforming schools and right. good schools would just expand, right? So now what's the, the opposing money. argument to why that's a bad idea and why what, we school have school choice? Yeah. Oh, the opposing argument is always uh, oh Ten tenured. Uh, yeah. Oh, but <laughs> we know what's teachers. better. Parents don't know what's good for their kids. The good schools will get too packed and the bad schools will well of course you know my argument is well then the good schools will expand and the shitty ones will disappear. Yeah. And they'll have to do a better job. But it's all about control. They 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 want the control, and that's what you got to look closely. The the people, the government giving you the money, more often than not, isn't about helping you. It's about controlling you and controlling your vote. Because why wouldn't they get? Why wouldn't they just cut the bureaucracy and give you a damn check? Next time you talk to somebody that's in support of this, why don't you tell them that? Tell them that. Say, oh yeah, I'll do it. Why don't we just cut the cut everything 
And instead of having welfare and housing support. Well, the problem with that is that the people that would like, because I'm assuming if I were to ask my buddy that he would say, okay, I agree. We should do that, but it probably won't get done that way. I, I, I would love it if he would say that, but you would be surprised. I don't, think, I don't think I'd be that surprised. I think I know him well enough to know that he would agree with that. I don't think he's pro the bureaucracy. I don't think he's pro growing government. He's pro helping people. Well, and if this is the best way to do it, and if it's a net win, he's willing to take it. So in other words, if it's, 51% of the people, it it changes or saves their life, and 49% of the people take advantage of it, stay home and are lazy, he still looks at it as a net win. Yeah, I, I would hope so. But I look, here's the deal. I bet you if a conservative politician presented it the way I'm showing, hey, we're going to save you money in taxes, and we're going to give money to people and cut all this bureaucracy because it'll, it'll make government smaller – I bet you would get support from conservative voters and I bet you would get opposition from liberal politicians because the liberal politicians are really supporting the bureaucracy. And then what they'll come out and say, they'll say, but we're going to lay off all these government employees that just want to help people. What are we going to do with these 30,000 people that we're going to cut their job, whatever? That's that's the the position they're going to they're going to come at, uh, at it from. But no, I would support it if it cut things, but I wouldn't support it if you're just throwing it on top of uh, everything else, I think it just becomes you know, yeah, yeah. more more of an issue. Do you guys know who uh, Lena Bloom is? No. Mm -mm. She is the first transgender cover model for Sports Illustrated. Oh, I saw that. Uh, I did hear about did that. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah. yeah. Now, what it's Very so interesting move on uh, Sports Illustrated. I am so curious to what happens. I mean, of course, there's people in uproar and yeah, their consumers are going to tell well, them if they like it or not. I, I mean, what's their demographic? It's got to be well, like our generation, like it, primarily men, but also like a younger generation of men. It's, it's. I mean, how many women are buying this I magazine? Okay, so and again, this I have no stats to back this up. Maybe Doug can look up how many people or what percentage of Sports Illustrated subscribers are men versus women. I would speculate that 80% are young At least, boys. right? Yeah, teenage to 25, and then maybe, like you said, Justin, our generation of of men that were around when it first was created. So yeah. I find it really, really interesting to to take a move. Now, like have you this. seen the pictures of her, of this person? Uh, just the cover. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you didn't know that they were transgender, would you know? Oh, she's close. She's. I wouldn't. I, mean, I wouldn't be able to. I yeah, wouldn't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, not from the is, picture. Not from the main picture. I, so I, I mean, without if you didn't tell me, right? Yeah. Like no, I mean, I because would, I know has you a can. Very like, feminine look for sure. Yeah. I so I think that uh, them saying it out is them. Trying to make a statement, yeah. I don't think you. I don't think if they said anything, it would obviously anyone would be able to tell. Uh, but the consumer will let them know if it's good or bad. Yeah. You know, for them, right? I mean, do you have do you have a theory or an idea what you think is going to happen? I think they're going to sell a shit ton of them. I, not because it, people uh, just because the controversy yes. of oh, it. Here we go. Here yes. we go. Yes. Yes. it's just such a, a formula <clears throat> that all these big companies have been. Yeah. yeah so the good. average age is thirty seven for sports. I knew it. Old okay. and seventy seven percent male. Yeah, wow. I knew it was older. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like that's even worse in their favor. Maybe. Average age, 37 Maybe. and 77% se men. Yeah. Controversy sells. That's why they would, I, I mean, think about it. Why well, so that's why I find this interesting because I think that mm. because, I mean, we're talking about it right now. How often do we bring up Sports Illustrated? Never. Never. Yeah. So yeah. now all of a sudden we're bringing it's awareness to it. So irrelevant. right yeah. away we are going to maybe bring awareness to, you know, tens of thousands of people that weren't even going to pay attention to it are now going to pay attention to it. I think they, they're just trying to get relevant again. Yes. Hundred yeah. percent. Sports Illustrated. That was that's what I was saying earlier. We were, everybody's been sleeping on them. Sports Illustrated. I guarantee you, their sales are shit compared yeah. to what they were when we were in in the nineties. Even pr all print. You know, all print's been pretty much irrelevant. You know, since we went digital. Any swimsuit, anything. Pornography so easily accessible. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about. So do you think? Right. So that. So your your theory is there's a, a couple smart smart executives that are sitting in a boardroom and they're like, Hey, we are drowning. We've been drowning for the last three five news. years. Let's drum up some controversy. What is something that'll be controversial that get people talking about our magazine mm -hmm. again? I got an idea. Didn't they recently? 100%. Let's didn't they piss off 77% uh, of our <laughs> subscribers. Right. I don't think they're, they're going to piss them off or not. I think they're just looking for news and controversy to sell more. Didn't they do uh, a cover not that long ago of like the first plus size model too? Mm. Yeah, I wonder. No, yeah. it wasn't Sports Illustrated it was Shape Sports Magazine that yeah. did that. We oh, talked okay. about that. It okay. was Shape Wasn't... Shape Magazine put out the plus size model I as the Sports cover. Sports Illustrated did too. No. Well, point. I don't know if yeah, maybe they, they did something have. I don't I'm unaware of, but I know the the big one that made the news that we even addressed and talked about was it was a yellow uh, either Cosmo, it was Cosmo or Shape. 
mm. that had the plus size model on the, and it said that this is this healthy. This is health. Yeah, that yeah. was the I remember line, that. Which was, yeah, but, but I don't know if Sports I don't know if Doug found it. Yeah, I found it. 2016, they, yeah, they did, did a plus did. size model. Oh, there you okay. Go. okay. But damn, she looked good though. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's plus size? <laughs> I guess. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah they, they I, I think they're just trying not to be, they're trying to be relevant. You know, okay, so yeah, I'll give you guys totally. an example. There was, remember the, okay, Maxim. Remember Maxim? How popular that was when mm -hmm. we were younger. Mm -hmm. It's like all but gone. It doesn't sell shit. Anymore. I, yeah, they moved. I, I know they moved digital. Like they, I don't know what. So I don't know what these companies have done. I can't imagine that they've stayed this entire time and relied on their digital print as their main source of income. Yeah, no you got to think. Or, I mean, their uh, their their print as their main source. I would think that they've gone digital and and made some oh, subscription. Yeah. Because I mean, where there. can you get it? It's for like an airport. Uh, like that's like the only place <laughs> left for like these magazines to live, and nobody's buying them. It's no, like, I, yeah. I, I can't imagine that anybody's interested all, in any of those like magazines. All the publications that were selling sex it, when we were younger are gone. Yeah. Well, because it was like taboo a little bit, you know, back then. Now it's just like <laughs> we're just inundated with. I mean, they're not though. Max still Instagram, exists. We're so straight. So this yeah, Playboy still exists. Play, they're so weak compared to what they well, were. Well, I mean, that's your opinion based off of what you think you see all no, the time. No, I know for a fact. Look at Playboy. Playboy's tanks. They tank. Yeah. Like they used to be an empire. They were like, yeah, well, yeah, but what are we? Look, so what I'm curious about, and what, what I'm trying to debate with you about this is like, I what I don't know is the behind the scenes decision. That, I mean, how many business moves do we make that people have no clue about about yeah. Mind Pump? And it, let's say all of a sudden digital programming falls off the cliff, and you, everybody says, oh my god, I bet Mind Pump is taking, and they're not making any money anymore. I would just I would chuckle and say, well, that's just one part of how we monetize. Oh sure, I'm mm -hmm. sure. They so have how do stuff. you? I mean, something that's that massive as Sports Illustrated, I would hope has some executives smarter smarter than we are that has gone okay this this whole print thing is heading in this direction let's pivot into this and this. yeah they tied into like actual swimsuit sales and all that or is it this is just oh, like the look at that. imagery Play, playboy magazine closing down for good i mean they're 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 done you know what the biggest indicator was when doug showed the average age 37 year old male is the average age of sports illustrated uh you know reader yeah that's you're dying if your yeah. business is that you're dying yeah. right as a, as a as a subscriber to the magazine but where i'm trying to go is like how, what makes you think that they don't have you know mp investments or they don't have something else that's that they're monetizing and that they're, they you make that much money as playboy or as sports illustrated i would hope you didn't put all your eggs in one basket and think like magazines are going to be the thing forever and not start to branch out into other i don't know what does sports illustrated own besides i don't know that's yeah, I, yeah. my point is that i'm not going to just discount it as a business and say like it's going it's done it's over well i know that the magazine part and the even right their digital i, I got no i have not gonna argue even that. their digital swimsuit stuff is probably tanked compared no. to what what their your old you know publication used to get or whatever are you googling away over there doug trying to find <laughs> out if they're uh, what's going on with them <laughs> yeah you're making me work hard i know i'm to sorry catch up. i'm sorry I'm, i i didn't know that the conversation oh their uh earnings have licensing doubled licensing deals uh, doubled yeah. through licensing deals boom well no I, I i sure but the magazine and their swimsuit I, stuff i'm not arguing yeah, that right yeah. you i you shit on sports illustrated as a company and i'm just no i meant i'm I meant def specifically oh, i know the, what you meant but yeah. that's why i'm saying that, so what so what? Yeah. It's a pivot. Yeah. So pivot what? Hard, there's yeah. there's something we are doing today that is probably making us very good money that will not be making us good money in ten years from now. If we're good executives, it won't. It, we won't skip a right. beat. Right. So my point, what I'm trying to say is, what they did with the swimsuit, what, what they're doing with the swimsuit edition, yeah, is like the last screams of death, or just absolutely brilliant. They've got other parts of their business that's growing and scaling, and it's just about bringing attention to them by causing controversy. Mm -hmm. And now tons of people are asking the same damn question that I'm asking right now. Is that wow? How is this? How is this company? Magazines are dying. They do something controversial to that you got to think eighty percent of their their readers are not going to like. And how is that going to benefit them? Oh well, they have licensing deals and they have other things that they they monetize. And now that seventy percent of the people that weren't even thinking about them so are now talking about them. So they know it's dying, and they're just using it to get attention well, to the right, business. Right. That's. I mean, I I wouldn't argue with that. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, just think of like like again, use our our business example. Ninety percent of the revenue that we were making was through digital programs online. Five years from now, that can completely becomes obsolete, but we had already pivoted five years ago to coaching trainers on how to be better trainers, and that's become the number one revenue stream. We decide to do something controversial to tank the fucking uh, program sales because we don't care. It's already tanking <laughs> just to draw Maps attention. Maps CrossFit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, no, great example though, right? Wrote it, we dude. do something. We do something that is so out of, out of left field that people would never you think that we would do. Maps cardio. 
to get people talking <laughs> trash about the business and who we are and what we're doing. And all that really does is bring more eyes and attention on potentially the other things that we're doing. Yeah. So I would not be surprised if Sports Illustrated has done that. I would not be surprised if Cosmo's done that. I would not be surprised if Playboy's done that. If you have good executives that are running the company, I would imagine they've done this. Yeah. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Check out Serenity Kids Baby Food. This is food for you kids that's healthy, made with things like grass-fed beef, bone broth, vegetables. It's healthy baby food that your kids will love. It'll make your kids healthier, smarter, and grow up stronger. So head over to MySerenityKids.com. Use the code MP20 for 20% off your purchase. All right, enjoy the rest of this podcast. First question is from Jay Hothi. Is there a different way to train for wide lats versus thick lats? Oh, uh, width versus wide thickness. Versus thick. I think a better way to word that question would be uh, train for a wide back or a thick back. Yeah, you're right. I would than, agree. Then say thick lats or wide lats. Yeah, because the because lats- that's not going to change. No, the lats grow and they shrink, right? So if they grow, they're going to get thicker and wider. Right. But when you're looking at back width, you're typically talking about the lats. So if you were to look at like an anatomy chart of the back- the lats kind of come up and attach up in the, the top of the arms and they come all the way down and, and attach up along the spine. And they're these really big kind of wing muscles that are, you know, they kind of, they, they give you the width look. Uh, right, because when you think like rhomboids or erector spinae would be That's more what's going to give you a thick back. Yeah, right. rhomboids, yeah, yes. mid trapezius, erector spinae. That's what's going to give you that kind of thick looking like three-dimensional so yeah. I, I like this question though because uh, i remember the 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 bro way of explaining this like i had buddies that would train like this where uh they would do all their lat exercises narrow grip to because they were in theory were trying to make their lats thicker that day yeah. or they would go all wide grip yeah, because they're trying to go yeah. width and the way this is worded is probably somebody who's been either told this or is thinking this yeah. and i think that's just the wrong way to look at it it's like developing your lats 100 is is going to make you wider looking right because right. The, the lats run on the side of you like that the muscles that i think will give you more of a thicker back look would be attacking things like your rhomboids, your traps, your rectus spinae. Those are the th muscles that I think are going to give you more depth. To yeah. Your so uh, typically, uh, anything that's like a pull up, a pull down, you're going to you're going to hit the lats much more directly. Things like rows still work the lats, but you're going to get more of those mid back muscles. Deadlifts, right? Lots of those mid back muscles, lots of the erector spinae. And it's funny through the years, I now am able to really tell. Um, with oh, decent accuracy, if someone does a lot of rows and deadlifts versus if someone does lots mm. of pull-ups. And yeah. you can see it in their back. You really can. I remember years ago, there was this guy that would come into the gym, and he was just a pull-up machine. He would just, And he had these really wide back with these kind of hanging lats, but he did lack some of that he thickness. Wings. Yeah, he, had that, he did lack some of that upper back thickness. Then there was these power lifters that I, that I knew that lacked the, the width, from the lat, but they had such thick, deep looking backs. Yeah. So really for full development, you want to kind of do all of it. You want to do all of those Well, that things. was the biggest thing that I saw and to Justin's point about director Spinet was, man, when I, uh, when you guys pushed me to lift heavy deadlifts, I had never done that in my life. Mm -hmm. Like I deadlifted, but not heavy, like not singles, doubles, triples, lifting, or even under five reps. It was always something I did lightweight. I did them at the end of workouts. I was never trying to push the weight with deadlifts. And I remember, I and I got to go back because I know you've re referenced it, Sal, before. In the oh, that podcast. before that picture, before and after is so telling. Yeah. And it all the only difference is literally, I and I actually threw out like all other back exercises. All I did was deadlift, and so to see the difference. Now, you got to remember that I got 15 years plus of before that of doing all kinds of lat pull down and pull ups and mm -hmm. all the traditional type of you know lat and back exercises. The only thing I wasn't doing was really focusing on deadlifting and what that could do for my back. It's also why I'm so defensive when I see the trainers that try and shit on deadlifting as a back exercise because nothing gave my back a fuller, thicker, better look mm -hmm. than that. I mean, and that was one of my early critiques from judging was when the first judge saw me, it was like, oh, you could improve your back thickness. And I went after deadlifting and it totally changed the, the look of my back. Yeah, it's sure. funny. When you see like strength athletes, like powerlifters, make the transition to bodybuilding, you often will see the issue of back width. So they, they oftentimes have to then focus on really getting the lats developed, but they don't lack thickness. Yeah. They've got really, really thick backs. Oh, our buddy Ben Pollock is a great example yes. of that. I mean, he is just a 
thick. Uh, yeah, thick. S- super. But you can see that he's having to work on the width to yeah. bring that kind of bodybuilding, you know, that that flared lat look or whatever. Yeah. So you got to do them both. Uh, but as far as the lats are concerned, you develop them or you don't. <clears throat> and when you develop them, they'll get wider and thicker. But you want that mid back, that that you know, canal down the spine where it, you know dips in because everything's real thick. Deadlift oh, and row. That's yeah, what's that comes do. with that heavy lifting where you're just in that isometric contraction of stabilizing your spine. Yeah. And, I mean, since, and, and now since we're on the topic, if you want that that yoke where it's like the traps and upper back, like do your your high pulls, your cleans, yeah. your farmer heavy walks, carries. Yep. Oh yeah, you ever like you ever run into like a, a an athlete that does just lots of cleans and high pulls uh, and they're not really focused on aesthetics they're just trying to focus on yep. getting really good at cleans and high pulls well, and what do they always do. have yep. super thick like upper kind of trap Huge traps yeah and, and i noticed that from training with justin we trained when we i was training with him or because we were building the app while i was also competing and i would get workouts in with him and i would do a cleans the presses so and i remember i went a good solid i would say a good solid six months to a year of no more traditional shoulder presses. Anytime I shoulder press, I cleaned the press and got up to a point where I was, I was trying to catch up to Justin what he was what he was doing weight wise. Mm. And I remember were you able to see, get close to him or what? <laughs> I got close. I don't think I was doing the same weight as he yeah, could do. Justin's a machine yeah, with that. But I, I did, what I did notice was again because I'm getting you know judged and I see pictures and I'm critiquing my physique like crazy during this time in my life. Uh, was the upper back development from that was an incredible and shoulders too. It blew my shoulders up, blew mm-hmm. my traps up. Just a great, great movement for the upper back. Yeah, it's got to be the one area of the body that if you develop it really well and balanced, it gives you this overall appearance of strength. I think some of that has yeah. to do too with it. It those exercises promote you pulling your shoulders back mm-hmm. and better posture. So at least I feel that way. Like if you get that upper back that's thick like that, not only are you standing upright with good posture, then your t-shirt well, kind of hangs the, off, so you yeah. can see that this person's all developed up there. And the fast twitch movement, uh, you know, getting that kind of stimulus is is that too. something that people lack a lot in their training. Uh, so to to be able to kind of get that from some of these like power lifting, what know, a great lifting. point! When does anybody do an explosive exercise for your shoulders or for your upper back? Like you just rarely ever see that as an explosive type of movement yeah. that you train. I think that's part of. It. I think it's good to point that out, actually, Justin, because I think that's half of why I saw such great benefit from doing that was I never did that. Yeah. So of course. It's yeah, that exercise is great for that. But if you do it all the time, obviously the the thing that yeah. we always talk about, the, the exercise you never do is probably the most. Yeah. And then beneficial. the other thing too is from a functional standpoint, you can't always judge a book by its cover, obviously. But I know the people that I would when I would grapple, the people that I could look at and tell, like that's a strong person, had a well developed back and hips. Like everything else didn't matter. If I had a well developed back and hips, you know they're strong. You know that they're strong. You tend to see that in in athletes. Next question is from Andrew Eberl twenty one. What are the best mobility exercises for low bar squats? Oh, good low bar mm. squats. Now, yeah. it's the, I guess the favorite. question I would have here is um, is is the question because the low bar squats, the bar is so low on your back, so, so, so low, shoulder so shoulder mobility. So shoulder is mobility is what I'm looking for, or mm. we're talking about squats, and so are they asking that because the squat depth they're lacking, and so that totally changes yeah. my direction. Well, let's look at the difference between a low bar and a high bar squat. Mm-hmm. High bar squat, you're going to be more upright. You're probably going to need more ankle mobility, right? Because your knees are going to travel forward a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Low bar squat, you're going to get more forward bend, yep. less ankle mobility, but probably more hip I would imagine stability uh, and strength, and then up, and then of course thoracic, right? And that upper back area is what I would, what you typically would see with somebody that you'd have to work on. I I think the biggest issue is what you guys said was the shoulder mobility, that that uh-huh. shoulder and thoracic kind of mobility to yeah. be able to support a bar way down on that part of your back and hold it with good chest out type of posture, because a lot yeah. of people aren't able to do that. So good exercise for that. I like uh, the the wall test wall that test, we have in zone one. Yeah, zone one and prime. Is I love, um, and I, th- I think I shared this on my story a, a couple months ago, and I've just really been incorporating it in the last year, our uh, suspension trainer W's. Yep. I love that as to prime for exactly that. Cause literally think about where you're trying to, the, the actual movement of getting me, me getting into the bar, under the bar for a low bar squat. This is what it looks like. Right. Yeah. And then we're wedging it down below. Like literally that is 
the W. You yeah, are waking yeah. up all those muscles. That's why I do are, face pulls as well. Yeah, yeah face pulls, W's on the suspension trainer. Um, those. I mean, I, I used to do zone one. So zone one was like my go to. Mm -hmm. Go to zone one, work on that intrinsically. The reason why I think I like W, it's easier to get somebody to do a W than get them to cue the zone one. So if you don't own Prime, it's harder for us to think to explain on a podcast like exactly what zone one is and mm -hmm. how to do it to get the benefits. Where if you go YouTube or Google search what a, a suspension trainer W is, mm -hmm. um, you could do it and emulate it. And I think you'll get tremendous benefit from yeah, that. Yeah, uh, prone cobra Cobras, can kind of work. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. work on that uh, on that area well. And then hip mobility, right? So, you know, what what kind of things are good for hip mobility? Um, you know, ninety ninety is always a great movement for that. Tube walking, you know, lateral tube walking can help a little bit with that stability that you might need for a low bar squat. Generally speaking, I'd say people tend to run into mobility issues more with a high bar squat though, in, in my experience. Oh yeah. You know, I, you see more issues with ankle mobility than you will. With well, ankle and the, just the high bar squats, it's taken me a long time to get to where I could actually do one really, really good. You have to have really good depth in order to, to be able to sit upright yeah, and keep that yeah. bar up really high. And if you're taller and longer, it's even harder, the longer the lever like that. So I had to low bar squat for a long time to get to hit depth. Uh, because I, I had to let my body fold over mm -hmm. a little bit because I didn't have the ankle mobility and, and shoulder mobility. In, in order yeah. to do Olympic it. lifters are probably your best example of high bar. Oh, squats. yeah. That's yeah, where yeah. you're going to see the best. They're nice and upright with that. I, I think, too, if you want to cover all the bases, you know, with wrists, elbows, and shoulders, you do Two our point. handcuffs for rotation. Uh, it, and that's just one of those that like, it just, it places, uh, you in such a good, uh, position and really articulates each one of those joints because those are all, you know, essential and in getting into that position lower on your back. Like you have to get everything in, in a nice, you know, functional position for that. Next question is from Daniel Delgado six. I've been training for a while under the influence of marijuana, basically every workout I've done for the past four to six months. Is this bad? I get this actually a lot. <laughs> I know. People, because I openly talk about my marijuana usage, yeah. people always want to know if I'm high working out. Yeah. Like, I, I, so I did not, I I hate did not it. like it working out. Yeah. I hate it. No. It's like, it may, okay, if I'm doing, um, like when I was competing, if I was doing like a, an hour of- well, How do you ramp it up? Yeah. yeah, if, yeah I've like, well, I mean, it relaxes you. Yeah. So, and- It's I, great you, for mobility. I want to be yeah. tight and tense. Yeah, exactly. So if I was doing mobility or cardio where I want my mind to go to another place- and just kind of like get into what I'm doing because mm -hmm. it's repetitive, whatever you're doing, right? If you're doing mobility or you're doing cardio work. Uh, but training is, uh, I don't know, I want to be fully alert <laughs> and tight and rigid. Well, studies, right? <laughs> studies show that it reduces explosive performance, but it may help with endurance, stamina and yeah. endurance and pain tolerance. Mm -hmm. So that may be where the person, you know, might get a better workout from it. Now, I'm going to be careful in, when I say you don't want to be dependent on anything to do your workouts. And the reason why I'm careful is because most of us are dependent on another drug. Caffeine. Uh, which is caffeine yeah. to do our workouts. I, these days, rarely ever work out without having caffeine. So I would sound like a hypocrite to say, you know, you probably shouldn't work out uh, under the influence of anything. Now, here's the deal with cannabis and your body. It probably has negative effects on your hormones, probably because the human studies are mixed. But the animal studies are pretty consistent. They show that it does reduce uh, testosterone production in animals. In humans, it's mixed, it, probably an estrogenic effect. In fact, if you go to your doctor and you're an adult male and you have gynecomastia, which is development of breast tissue, and you're not taking anabolic steroids and you don't have other types of issues, one of the first things they'll ask you is, do you use a lot of cannabis? And then they'll have, they'll have you reduce it because it's been shown to cause that yeah. in men. So doing that and then working out is there a potential negative effect? You know, again, the challenge is controlling all the factors. Is the the fact that he's using can he or she is using cannabis making him more consistent? In other words, if he didn't use the cannabis to work out, he'd be less consistent. Well, we got to weigh that in too. But let's say everything is equal. So using it or not, he would still work out consistently. I would say it's probably a net negative because of its effects on inflammation and hormones probably reducing kind of the muscle building you know signal that to being, some extent. that being said though i mean if it's 
if it's not, I think their their big concern is like, is it killing my gains, right? Like when someone asks a question like this, or yeah. when I get DMs about this, I get it a lot. Like people are just like concerned that is this killing my gains? Am I going to the gym, but because I'm going high, I'm getting fifty percent of the benefits that I would I don't get? See, I like, haven't heard a lot of people actually working out like uh, high versus like people are using it as like a recovery afterwards. I like, get it, especially a lot. with a lot of athletes where their their output is so extreme that you know it actually like helps. Them them sort of to to uh, get down more into you know a, a steadier heart rate. I, I know a lot of people that use cannabis before they work out. Oh, so do I. I yeah. get. I it's actually up there with one of the top DMs. Yep. I get. Yeah. No, it's one huh. of the top DMs, and I think that a lot of that has to do. One, obviously, I talk about it openly on the show, so everybody just assumes I'm this super stoner and ask me all marijuana <laughs> questions. And then I also just think that it's been accepted. Chronic user of chronic. I mean, just ten years ago. I mean, I forget what the statistics were on how many people. Uh, Bro, in the sixty, in the seventies, a lot of bodybuilders used marijuana before. They I know, out. but I mean, as far as like the general population, yeah. as far as the acceptance of marijuana, where I mean, now in California, you can go walk into it like a liquor store and go buy. Bro, so people look do like everything high now. Yeah, yeah. let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. Like, well, a lot really, of things are better high. Yeah, let's be honest. Workouts here. are just a, lot a of part of that. Yeah. But I prefer like movies and stuff over my my just day. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I will. I will say like if you're gonna do stretching. If you're going to do mobility, cardio, yeah. I could see that. I have done it and lifted weights just to test it out. Me too. And it definitely doesn't work for strength and power and performance for me. But if I'm like just trying to get a pump and I'm just squeezing and focusing and concentrating on muscles and isolating, then I could maybe see. I could see that. Yeah. I could see a day where I'm like beat up. I know I, I shouldn't go heavy. Maybe that's one of the ways to keep me from going heavy is like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to go in stoned. And so I'm going to just <laughs> yeah. cruise around, take I long rest periods, on that. lightweight, yeah. get nice pumps. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I Dude, can see this, that. There's this huge community of people that will smoke weed and that, or eat it and then do jujitsu. Like a huge community uh, of well people. so i kind of see that because that sport you are supposed to be kind of loose right, right. loose like and you, you wanna, don't want to be rigid and, and stiff and tight yeah, and, and, and and especially when you're thinking geek. ahead too right in terms of your moves and everything and so like it seems like it's uh, there was a tournament i don't somewhat. remember where the tournament was and the i, I think it was like in a, the zone I, I don't know if it was a 10th planet uh jiu-jitsu tournament that 10th planet's eddie bravo obviously mm -hmm. big you know pot advocate or whatever and they actually before they did the match they smoked a joint all like together in, in front of everybody, uh, <laughs> and then they awesome. did jujitsu. So there's like this big, and there's this, and there's this whole other side that's like so anti. Well, I mean, you, I would, I could see that though, right? Because it's so like uh, conducive to like flow state, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and that, I mean, it could promote that, right? So if you're, do, that's where I think marijuana has some benefits. Like if you're doing something where getting into flow is super beneficial. Uh, yeah. I could see the, the like, I know can, a lot of snowboarders. I mean, I, that's some of the things, some of the things I like to do, like before I ride, I totally like really? it. Yeah. Which, I, which is counter to what you're saying, right? Cause obviously if I'm doing a hard cut or a jump or something, yeah, but you're just trying to cruise probably. Yeah. I'm just trying to cruise and I want to, and I want to be so into what I'm doing. And so I just, uh, being high when I'm doing that makes it, I, yeah. I can feel a difference. But look, at it. the end of the day, I think you got to be careful, right? You can abuse yeah. it. You can abuse anything. I've known my share of stoners that <laughs> just became complete losers. Well, to me, Have you ever worked the, out? Have you ever worked out high? Yeah. 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 You're going to be that guy. Yeah. Don't be that guy. Next question is pr from PSTC Teakins. What tips would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur who wants to open their own gym starting small, of course? All right. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you cut me off. I always feel I'm... like I crush people's dreams. Really. <laughs> Don't do it. If Bad idea. If you're like, okay, here's the deal. If you're an entrepreneur and that's what you are, then the excitement for you has more to do with creating successful businesses, meeting the challenge, selling them. If you're into your passion, you might be labeled as more of like an artist or someone who's passionate about something. That's a little bit different. Usually people are a mix of the two. If you want to build businesses that are successful, it's hard to pick a business that's harder than gym business. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's just a fact. It's, it's a brutal business. Yeah. The gym business is a very difficult business to really, it costs a lot. It's a lot of capital. It's, there's a lot of risk involved. There's not a lot of money, too. Not a lot of money. There's a, tons of competition. Y you are working your... I mean, I, man I managed some of the most successful gyms in these in these big chains. And I'm telling you, man, I was I worked, you know, t minimum 12 hours a day. Minimum just to do just to, to do well. And this was with the m huge marketing machine by, behind me. Lots of capital. Then I owned my own. 
And it was, it, it's hard, man. It's like opening a restaurant. Like, mm -hmm. look at the success rates of restaurants. It's like opening gyms. So it's going to be real tough. What are my tips going to be for you? Um, make sure you have a lot of money to float yourself for a while because you're going to be in the red, I think, for a little while. Focus on your local community. A lot of people forget this when they open gyms. They start, they think digitally and they think they're going to do this huge like internet marketing type of thing. Mm -hmm. If your business is, is your members, I think, what is it, a 10-mile radius? That's where you get a majority of your members. If I, last time I looked at the statistic. Yeah. So old school marketing is actually quite effective still for small gyms. You work with local businesses. You go to houses around you. you you're trying to get 10 miles around your gym. The digital marketing more is like for almost like your your business card, but I would I would spend much more time on uh, the ground walking around meeting people. You know what I was thinking about too and it's like what's your definitive difference out there in the market, you know, in terms of like all the rest of the gyms and what are you offering specifically? I just think as an example uh, something I've seen lately, which you guys have seen, sort of the, the trend of, of women really wanting to grow their glutes, right? So there's been a few of these like smaller type gyms that are just literally hyper-focused on this gym provides you this service. Like we're just going to get grow your, your glutes. Yeah. And they're exploding, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and that's the thing though. It's it's not like what you think. Like I'm just going to service everybody. Everybody wants to come work out. Like you ha like I think in, in terms of, uh, what's out there now uh, and the, the big gyms are already established and they've had this whole formula of like, oh, I'll take your money because I know you're not going to show up. You know, like I think that's, you, you let them have that. If you're just starting out, I think you got to be really creative and really pinpoint uh, that, that very specific thing that people are actually like going to drive to your place to go get. Well, I, so I know I came out hard on it right away. Right? I always say terrible idea. And that's me personally. Like, I would never do it. And the only way I would do it personally was if I'm at a place in my life where I'm not financially driven anymore, and because I, I like the idea of having a gym, like I, have, I like the idea of having a. You want to be the guy that retires and yeah, owns his gym and sits yeah, in there. And I'm filthy like, yeah, rich. I don't give a shit if it's profitable. Yeah, or not. I 100 percent will own a gym one day. Yes, not to make money. Exactly. I like I'll buy all the equipment outright. I'll own the building that it's I'll built have in. A gym and a bar. All but. it'll be closed at the hours <laughs> that I want to work out, so me and my buddies can come in and lift, and I don't give a shit that it kills sales for me. Like that's how I want to have a gym, and so I think. I think you, you really have to understand what your desired outcome is going into the gym. So if you are somebody who uh, you desire uh, freedom and autonomy and the, the, the cool factor of walking in at any time to lift in your gym, and that trumps paying your bills and making really good money and thriving financially, then so be it. Like, who am I to judge and say that's a bad idea then? Because you could definitely make a living doing that. But I, I think the last time I, I looked up the stats on what the average gym owner makes, it's under $50,000 a year. You better love it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You better Because you're going to be there your trainers in there are making more money than you. Yeah, you know, and, that's going to happen. And, and so 50 grand a year, depending on where you live in the country, is is not a, is not an easy living. You, Bay Area, you're struggling. And you're working a lot. And, you, and the average entrepreneur works 62 hours a week. So that's an average entrepreneur. If you're a gym owner, I think it's even higher than that because you're going to probably be there a, a if it's open, you're probably there at the very beginning. So I think you need to consider that. I think you also need to consider the different types of models and what you're trying to do. Uh, running a large box gym. I mean, even when working for companies like 24 Hour Fitness, uh, those were not their most profitable. So going big is not a great idea. I think that's a lot of risk and there's not a lot of money in that. Uh, the most profitable gyms right now are the little boutiques that are about 3,000 square feet to Justin's point that are more specialized. So it's an in, in, in EFT base. So you get a, you know, but, only need about a hundred and something. Yeah. Members. They're high service, high dollar. High yes. service. Yeah. yeah because yeah, yeah. It, you're looking at, that's, that's what I was going to say, because kind of your two options are low service, low dollar. So you're cheap, right? Like planet fitness, right? Low service, but it's very cheap, but you need a lot of volume. Lots of investors need to be involved with that. Right. Model. Or high service, high dollar, low volume, right? So I only have 100 people, but they're all paying me 250 bucks a month or something like that. The other thing I would suggest to this person also is you better have gone and killed it as a trainer or killed it within a gym yes, first before 100%. you even want to think about doing this. Because- 
becoming a great trainer and keeping your your schedule filled with clients is already hard as shit for people. That's hard to do with a, a huge company taking care of everything or all you have to do is contract a yep. space out. So you better have been the number one performer at a big company as a gym at a, at a big box gym for a long time or you better be the top dog in a contracted place out. So if you were somebody who's renting space for $600 a month, mm -hmm. you best be the dude who's making a hundred, the girl who's making 150 to $250,000 a year just doing that alone before you think about trying to start a, you know, brick and mortar place while also trying to scale a training business. Like, cause you're going to want that. Like I, if the only way I would consider it back then to even do something like that is, okay, I've got a good safety net of 150 to 200 thousand dollars a year that I've built off of being a great trainer. Now I'm going to try and build this gym and create a livelihood for 10 other trainers in my gym. At least I have this to fall back on that I can at least cover my bills. Let's see how good I can well, also I look, manage I a gym. Owned, I owned a small facility, and when I say small, it was tiny. I had uh, a, I had a you cage. were under three thousand square feet. Oh yeah, I had a cage. I had uh, a cable machine. I had some benches, some dumbbells. Like that was it. It was just a, a, a small area. I had some offices. My gym was packed, so I had trainers that were paying me rent. I had massage therapists paying me rent. I had acupuncturists paying me rent. I had my schedule full, and I had trainers making as much money as I was in my facility because they would pay me their rent, and then they'd train their clients. And there were definitely times when I would think to myself, like, why am I yeah. <laughs> owning and managing and taking all this risk when I could just pay rent at some studio and make more money. Now, for me, it, it, I chose to do that because I would rather be the owner. I'd rather have that autonomy. Um, I loved it, so I lived there all the time. It didn't matter for me. But I'm telling you right now, if you're thinking financially, uh, good luck. It's a, it's a really, really tough business. And Not only that, but wouldn't you go back and tell the younger self, yours are like, you know what, knowing what you know now, a better strategy would be to go build a business like Mind Pump, make a bunch of capital, take that capital, then go buy out your equipment, buy out your facility. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, of course. And then still fulfill that dream. So if your ultimate dream is yeah. I want to own a gym and that be kind of my livelihood, I think there's faster ways of getting there than actually opening the gym. Yeah. Yeah. I think go, go be, into finance first. Yeah, yeah come exactly. Back right. Go the, do something the, else the, that, buy that drives more revenue that you're more likely to be successful in. Which, by the way, if you can actually build a gym and make really good money, you're probably pretty badass at a lot of other things too. Yeah. Because yeah. it takes quite the entrepreneur to be able to build a successful gym. It's not some dumb meathead that builds a a, a gym and actually makes six figures no, plus. No. Look, you're gonna, if you open a tiny studio and you, you're starting from scratch, it's going to cost you a hundred thousand dollars at least just to buy the stuff set it up and float it that's minimum here's the other thing if you're a, a high service high dollar low volume facility that means you're going to have to be in a wealthy area which means you're going to pay high rent so you also have to consider that as well now you open a small gym that's twenty thousand square feet you're up in the hundreds of thousands of dollars or million dollars just to get started so like closer to a million yeah i know because how many yeah. times i thought about doing it right yeah. Now, of course, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Would I change anything? No, it led me to doing what I'm doing now, but I don't know if I would have lasted just doing that forever. At some point, I would have got out of it. I mean, I know we're all going to own a gym. Yeah. I, there's no doubt in my mind. We talk about it all. The question is when the timing, you know, yeah. when do we want to do that? And I think I we all know it's when we don't care if it's profitable or mm -hmm. not. That literally it could have five members and we're not going to be stressing can, out to uh, keep the lights on. Buy out on. all the Planet Fitnesses. Which I, they, I, think this, I think it's really similar to owning a bar. I think that's some of your bars that everybody thinks are probably crack and successful. I think there's a huge overhead in owning a bar, but a lot of the people that keep the bars that are going for a long time are people that don't need the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the, it's their favorite local spot to yeah. go to and they've got other businesses that they make a lot yeah. of money. Now that being said, if you, if you took us and put us in a big box gym that wasn't doing very well, I'm confident we could definitely increase their revenue and increase their profitability. But it's a lot of damn work. It's oh. one of the most, I mean, one of the most challenging things. Like I said, I, I have an uncle that owns a restaurant. It's very comparable. Like my uncle lives there mm -hmm. all the time. Like yeah, he's yeah. always there. That's what it's like running a successful gym. You are just there all the time. You have your morning crowd, you have your evening crowd. <laughs> You're in always the middle. putting out fires. Oh yeah. All totally. day long. Look, if you like Mind Pump, you got to go head over to mindpumpfree.com. So we got so much free content, free guides that can help you develop your body 
burn body fat, get in better shape. It's all available for free. We did this for our viewers and our listeners. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsal, and Adam at mindpumpadam. If food rules you in mm -hmm. many different ways, breaking that chain can make you feel empowered. Now, here's the dark side of that, right? What drives a lot of people to do this is the sense of control. In fact, they'll do it worse when the life around them is very stressful and things seem to be falling apart. That's when they're most strict with that type of eating because it's